Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about default Bayesian parameter estimation in a normal model applied to yield data. Now, if you haven't seen it, you might want to go back to watch the video where we discussed the, uh, all the mathematical formula that we need to analyze data in a normal model. Also, you might want to see below, there's a PDF version of these slides. Now, let's suppose that we have a random sample of nine farms of Iowa and we're collecting information on the yield. And so what we've actually collected is their yield in bushels per acre. Now we're going to assume that those that yield, which we're going to denote yi, has a normal distribution with a common mean mu and varying sigma squared, and that all the observations are independent. And what we're interested in doing right now is making statements about mu, that is the population mean yield across Iowa, and sigma squared, the population variance in yield in Iowa. And at the end, we're also going to be talking about the standard deviation sigma. Now the data we've collected is this data, these data right here, right? Just nine observations, so they're all listed up. All right, so uh, the very first thing I would suggest you do when you have data is to take a plot of it and see what it looks like. So here's a histogram of that yield data. Ideally, you'd like to uh, identify whether it seems approximately normally distributed since we are making that assumption. With only nine observations, it's really hard to see if this histogram approximates a bell-shaped curve. All right, but one thing we can see is that it seems like none of the values are too small or too big relative to what we would expect to see for yield. Uh, and so the data at this point seem reasonable. All right, so we can calculate, as we pointed out in the previous video, there are three quantities that we need to know to get all of the posterior distributions for the normal model. We need to know the sample mean, we need to know the sample variance, and we need to know the sample size. So we can calculate those three statistics in R, and we can use those statistics to calculate things like posterior densities, posterior means, and credible intervals. Now these terms are called sufficient statistics, that's why I've titled the slide that, which is a much bigger and more in-depth topic uh, that you might be interested in, but I'm not going to go into detail here. Just know that these are sufficient to produce all of the things that we want on the bottom. All right, so here's the posterior density from you. Right, we can see that it's sensor centered at about, I don't know, 185 there, and it has a spread that ranges at least down up to 200 and down to 170 or so. All right, so this summarizes, or in some sense, this is the end result of a Bayesian analysis of this problem. Right, we're interested in the population mean yield in Iowa farms, and that density summarizes all of that information. Similarly, we could take a look at the posterior for the variance. So here's the probability density function for the uh, posterior for that variance. And it also summarizes all the information we have uh, about that variance, right? And so we can see that that variance ranges from something relatively small, about 200, to something relatively big, like 1,500. Okay, now, as usual, uh, it's hard to sort of hand somebody a density, and so usually we will summarize those densities with a few uh, lower dimensional statistics. And so we might be interested in getting, say, posterior means. So here's the posterior mean for the population mean yield. So the population mean yield is expected or estimated, our best guess about that value is 186 bushels per acre. Similarly, we can get the posterior mean for the variance, that is the variance of mean of yield in Iowa, and we find that that's 627, and now notice that the units here are bushels per acre squared. In the previous video, we talked about how the units for a variance are the squared units of whatever the original units are, so there's an example of those squared units, and that makes this a little bit hard to interpret. All right, we can get credible intervals using the formulas we provided on the previous uh, video. So the the posterior, sorry, the credible interval for the population mean yield is 169 to 202. So what that means is that our belief about that true population mean yield in Iowa is somewhere between 169 and, two and, and 202. We can get a similar uh, result for the variance. So for the variance, uh, I guess it's a little bit cut off there. But the 95% credible interval for the variance ranges from 215 to 1,726. And again, this is in bushels per acre squared, making it somewhat hard to interpret.
All right, just as a visualization of these quantities, those posterior expectations and credible intervals, we've overlaid that on the density. So here we can see that uh, we have, right, between the two solid lines, we have 95% of the area of this posterior density. Uh, that dashed line is the posterior expectation there right in the middle. Similarly, we can do the same thing now for our variance. So again, the solid red lines indicate 95% of the area under this curve, and that red line indicates the posterior mean. Since this might be the first time you're seeing it, you'll notice that it's not at the peak, right? Because this is not a symmetric distribution. And that long right tail, and this distribution is right skewed, pulls that mean to the right of the peak. All right, so now let's briefly talk about the standard deviation, because again, this is a more interpretable quantity. We can, using uh, information on the previous video, talk about the posterior median pretty readily. Basically, what we have to do is we have to calculate the posterior median for the variance using the inverse gamma quantile function. And we can just take the square root of that uh, quantile, which is the median in this case, and that gives us the posterior median for the standard deviation. So the posterior median here is 23 bushels per acre. So now we can think about that as being the variability in that population around that mean yield in the state of Iowa. And that 23 now is a bit more interpretable. One thing we know is that if that was the true value, then 95% of the observations would be plus or minus 2 times 23 away from that mean. Okay, so this is now a more interpretable quantity. We can get credible intervals as well. And the way that we get credible intervals is we find the credible interval for the variance, and we just take the square root of the endpoints. And when we do that, we can find that the credible interval here is between 15 and 42 bushels per acre. So that variability, our belief, is 95%. That is between 15 and 42. All right, so let's summarize. OK, before we summarize, let's talk about uh, looking at the posterior density for the standard deviation. And that we've now overlaid those 95% credible intervals. So again, between those two solid red lines, we have 95% of the area under this curve. And we have that solid dashed line is now the posterior median as opposed to the posterior expectations we've been showing before. Again, it's slightly now to the right of that uh, peak. All right, so in summary, uh, it's been now a, a video ago, but note that all of this was done under this particular default prior. And there are other choices you can do, but that's all I'm going to be talking about, at least for the purpose of STAT 587. Under that prior, we have this posterior, the marginal posteriors for the mean, that's a T. For the variance, that's an inverse gamma. And then we showed a code of how to do a bunch of the calculations. And so here it's all in one place. We first calculate those submission statistics. Uh, we then calculate posterior expectations, if we're interested in those. We can calculate posterior medians if we're interested in those. And finally, we can calculate posterior or credible intervals uh, from that posterior. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to now move on and talk about what non-Bayesians do in both the binomial and normal models. Hope to catch you there.